the demand of God because it that you that you to further push yourself or allow the spirit of God to push you to the next reality of the demand of God for your life it's important that we establish that because uh, uh, as the spirit of God begins to call for certain dimensions for certain realities for certain uh, uh, things in our life we, 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 we need to employ amen, the, the power of, of fasting to bring our soul to subjection to bring our soul to submission that's the first thing I would like to emphasize that the power of fasting helps amen, to, to deaden the voice of the flesh to, to silence the voice of the flesh because the, the the, 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 fle- the flesh is very very powerful the flesh is more powerful in fact the flesh is more powerful than the, you know than the devil right? the devil will need amen the, the agreement of the flesh amen to operate in your life so so if you're living a life amen that that put that puts the flesh underneath <laughs> if you're living a kind of a life amen that subject the flesh and you know and awakens the voice of the spirit then then you don't really need to be fasting every day amen because you're living in, in that consciousness consciousness amen of what fasting ought to do remember that fasting is like a trigger point is it's like a jump start amen fasting is supposed to be more like a jump start every time god asks you to fast amen is because you are not tallying with him you are not you are, you are not you're you not you're not tracking with him you are not walking with him you are not where you're supposed to be so he he he, he calls for a fast to wake you up amen to 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 bring you to a point of, of divine understanding or divine knowledge or, 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 or know what to do with regards to you know what what is what is what, what he's calling for what he's demanding all right I, I'd like to read Joel chapter 2 you know as, as a foundational scripture I hope I'm not too fast Let me read Joel chapter 2. We're going to look at Joel chapter 2. Because to me, I feel Joel chapter 2 puts a context to that which we are looking into. Because the, the essence, the purpose of this you know, teaching is, is to further buttress the whole idea of you know, engaging the seasons of God. If we're going to engage the seasons of God, then we've got to understand what is required of us. And one of the things that is required is prayer. We need to pray. We need to intercede. We, we need to we need to walk in obedience. We need to we need to bring our mind to renewal. We need to have the mind of Christ. But for us to be able to do these things, Amen. We 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 need to also fast because fasting will will will, will do certain things within our life. Will prepare us. Will prepare the soil. Will prepare the ground. For, for us to receive, amen, the coming of the kingdom. Uh, like I was sharing some time ago that uh, if the kingdom of God is coming near you, then 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 evidently there must be a complete readjustment of your entire life. You, you, you cannot say you are embracing the coming of the kingdom of God. The proximity of the kingdom is, 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 is close by, is close to your door. And you are still living the way you live in your life, you know, some six months ago. <laughs> no, once you begin to sense the coming of the kingdom, once the, 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 there is a proclamation and your spirit is saying yes to these things, then you've got to understand that what needs to happen next is readjustment. There has to be readjustment. There has to be readjustment of your mindset, of your perceptions, of of your of your interactions. We, we've talked about you know the comings of God in, in, in terms of relationship. My God, I want you to listen to you know that teaching. If you, if you have not listened to it, I want you to you know download it, listen to it you know time and over again because it's going to change your life. That when the seasons of God begins to come upon your life. Even your concept of interactions and relationship has to change. Sometimes God will God will deliberately shift you, move you away from certain people because those people cannot go on to the next reality of God's intention for your life. And if 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 you allow them to continue, you know, journeying with you, they are gonna bother you, they're gonna burden you, they're gonna they're gonna draw you back. So you've got to understand, and not, not, not that you, you don't like the people, you, you, you're still an acquaintance with them, but you can no longer relate with them the way you used to because they are not telling with you, they are not journeying with you. They are not, it's not like they are not 
they are, they are not good people. They are good people, but you are, you are pressing into something that they are not seeing. You, God, heaven is calling you to, into a dimension that they are not picking up. So when, when you begin to talk about the things of the Spirit, they'll be looking at you and say, like, what, what's wrong with this guy? What, 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 what's this, you know, crazy about? Why are you screaming? Why are you, why, why, what's your issue? Relax. Ah, you cannot relax because you, you're hearing another voice from a distance. Amen. You're seeing something that they are not seeing. And so when you try to communicate with them, it becomes an issue. In fact, there's going to be friction. So, so, so heaven will call you out and say, come out, Abraham, leave your father's house. Yes, I know they are your father. I know they are connected to you. you I mean, the closest person you can have in proximity is your father, your father's house. I mean, th- those are the closest people you have. Yet when God begins to demand and declare and proclaim a new day upon you, you will be asked to leave your father's house, leave your comfort zone, leave that which you taught, amen, is your security and come away to the to the next reality of my plan. Remember that the reason why we are on earth here is to fulfill a divine counsel. We're not just here, amen, to you know to 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 parley. We're not just here to play around. Yes, we will we will we will have you know uh, good times with our friends and all that. But but you've got to also understand that it has to be in context. All right, don't don't journey with people that while you're playing they cannot pick the the, the, the next speakings of God over your life or over their own life. All right, I mean I used to have friends back there in Nigeria. We we play around. They come to my house from morning till night. We play. We we do everything together. But while we're doing that somebody say come let's pray and as we begin to pray my God we bust into prophecy things begin to happen we just start praying for nations and all that we are all friends so what I'm saying is if, if you have friends, if you have people that understand all right, the, the, the dynamics of the spirit, the realities of the spirit, amen, you will journey together even in the things of God. You will, you, you, you will move with them in the, in the things of God. But if you just have friends that are just friends and all they do, amen, is to project carnality and project religion and project their own agenda, you know, and, and, and all they want is just maybe basically even to use you. And, and but they are not ready to be responsible to journey with God and move on with God. People like that, God will make sure that you leave them behind, lest they keep you also behind. So, so, so we've got to understand all this, and and it's important because as we understand this in in terms of even relationship, as we journey with God, it 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 helps us. It gives us clarity. It gives us you know insight. It gives us uh, you know a, a definition into 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 the realities of God and into the demands of God. And guess what? In that realm that heaven is bringing you into, I can assure you that He'll be prepared certain people who, who, will, who will be journeying with you alongside him. Never you think that when God calls you to journey, that you're journeying alone. No, no, no. Never you think that. Amen. You, as you journey in obedience, heaven will be connecting people with you alongside, along path. Heaven will be joining men of like mind. Amen. Men of like kindred spirit. God will be joining them. He will be sending them across your path. Amen. It may take time. And, and if it takes time, it's because there are things that he wants to teach you alone. Amen. When God says, come away, come aside. Amen. Come to the backside of the wilderness or come to the backside of Jordan is because there is there are things that he wants to teach you. There are things that he wants to teach you because in the day of manifestation, in the days of interaction, there's no longer room for to, to be taught. You're, you're, you're interacting and you are required, amen, to, to you know to bring your own wisdom and understanding to the fore. You are, you are required, amen, to contribute that which you've received. Every man that is able to give something meaningful in regards to you know kingdom integration is because they have been alone. They have journeyed alone like David in the backside of the wilderness. They've been underwater, amen. They've been on the stream, amen. They their, their stone has been has been has been smooth, amen. Through the seasons of the of the washings of the of, of, of the water of God, I, I, like like our like our sharing, you know, we, we are moving from the day where we where we just remain as stones cut from the quarry, amen. Gone are the days where we just we just tell people, yes, you know, we have been cut out of, out of the quarry and we want to fit into each other. My good God, you you will agree with me that <laughs> stones cut from the quarry, amen, has caused more commotion in the body of Christ because such stones amen have not been processed have not been taken to 
to the stream. Amen. David, I mean, went to the stream to pick stones, stones, not at the quarry. Amen. Solomon, you know, took stones at the quarry. David went to the stream. There are two orders here. We have left the order of Solomon. Amen. Building the house of God through stone cut at the quarry. These are stone cut. Yeah, they may be cut to shape, but they are, t- they are still sharp. Their character has not been refined. Their value system have not been refined. Amen. Where they are trying to fit into you. Amen. They are injuring you. Amen. Even even, even when they don't know they're, they're injuring you, they're injuring you. I mean, I've met a lot of people in terms of relationship that because of their attitude with regards to the things of God, with regards to the things of the kingdom, you are trying to build, you are trying to proclaim the day of the Lord, you are trying to tell people, this is what God is doing, this is the, they are fighting you. Why? Because, yes, they, they've been caught, they're stones, they're, they're stones caught at the quarry, but guess what? They have not been taken to the stream. They have not been buried at the stream. Amen. Every time God needs to use a man to do something, it doesn't take them from the quarry. It takes them from the stream. The Bible says when, when Jesus, amen, on that day, you know, came out of River Jordan, heaven opened up and the voice of the Lord said, this is my beloved son. Hallelujah. That is the place of approval. That when you come out, everything about, about God, when the Father wants to do things, he picks people out of the stream. He said that you may be washed by the washing of the water. My good God, we've got to understand what, what the Spirit of the Lord is emphasizing to us in this new day. So quickly, before I continue on this, let's go to uh, you know, Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2 verse 1 says, Blow the trumpet where in Zion. So this basically tells us that Zion amen, had been in a condition of slumber. You don't want to. You don't blow a trumpet, amen. In the in the condition where people are alive, where people are active, you blow a trumpet in, amen. In a state where people are in slumber, where people, you know, are, you know, are just snoring, where people are forgotten, amen, who they are. They've lost sense of call, source of sense of sense of identity, sense of authority. They've lost it. Sense of governance, sense, sense of government. They've lost it. So they're just, you know, going through the motion. They they are alive, but they are dead, amen. They, these are these are walking dead people. He says, so blow the trumpet. You blow the trumpet. My good God, Master Kiyamda. Father, that, may, that they may be a blowing again of the trumpet of God upon the Zion. Upon, amen, your walk, upon the people, upon your representative in this nation of South Africa and across the nation, across the globe. Let there be a resounding, let there be a proclamation, let there be a declaration, amen, of the blowing of the, of the, of the trumpet of the Lord. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. The mountain has been sleeping. <laughs> there's, a, there's, an, there's, there's a need for an awakening. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all who live in the land tremble. Which land? The land of the church. The land of the body. (laughs) Because whenever God wants to do something first in the nation, he first deals with his own nation first. Whenever God wants to move within a a continent, he first deals with his own representative. That's why they say judgment begins in the house of God. So, And that's why you see sometimes we we post the things. We we challenge people through our posting. We we challenge people through the things we're talking about. And I know a lot of pastors and apostles, prophets, they don't like what we're talking about about but what are we doing we're blowing the trumpet what are we doing we're sounding the alarm we are we are waking up a people i mean he said let all who live in the land tremble there has to be a day where amen, people begin to tremble where people begin to wonder hey what's going on because it's from there that yes the, the, the sense of awareness begin to dawn he said let all the people who let all the people who live in the land tremble for the day of the lord is coming what are we talking about we're talking about amen that that, that when god proclaims you know a new season he's talking about that his day coming in fact if you read john chapter excuse me not John Matthew chapter 3 when when uh, when uh, uh, uh John began to declare, amen, that, you know, repent the kingdom of God, amen, has, has come near you. The next thing John will talk about is the person of Christ. In fact, I think I need to read that scripture. I want you to see how John I'm just looking for my eyeglasses here. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank you, Father. Just relax. Give me a few minutes. <laughs> I'll get it right. It is important that I show you this. Context matters. Context matters. 
Thank you, Father. We're looking at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Brother Matthew, where are you? Quickly. Oh, thank you, Father. I'm going to come back to Joe, but I just need to read this. Context is very important. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 says, In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of, of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Under Rabbi I, I can't get enough of this scripture. The kingdom of God is near. In the day the kingdom of God begins to come near you, my good God, there has to be a readjustment of your entire life. Your church must change. <laughs> it has to change. The way you do things change. In the day the kingdom of God begins to come upon, upon your house, upon your church. Guess what? You can't be singing the same song you're singing two, two, three, four years ago. You've got to find the, the song of the kingdom. Oh, my God. You've got to learn to sing the song of the bow. It's past. Now begin to sing the song of Zion. Now begin to sing the song of the Lamb. Begin to sing the song of the nations coming in to the house. You can't still be singing, all right? The, the, the old song that, 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 that defines the culture of the past. I see a lot of people, you know, who declare that they are in the apostolic day. They, they are in that which the Spirit of the Lord is doing. But when I, when, when, when I engage with this people and go to their house... <laughs> The man is saying, you know, apostolic things. But everything that defines the house is of the old order. Including the song. Come on. Something is wrong. You have not cultured your people. And it means that you're just parroting this thing. That thing has not become a culture. has not become a value system, a template of operation in your own, in your own personal life. When we, when we came into the order of the apostolic, you know, 1991, 92, 93... And then the Lord began to deal with us. Guess what? All the songs we used to sing back then, all the charismatics, and I'm talking about literal song now, right now, all that which we, we used to sing, amen, Abraham blessings and man, all that, heaven shut them down. We began to tap into the spirit and heaven, heaven began to, you know, give us new sound. Sound that brought, amen, songs of the Lamb. I mean, I can tell you about people in our church, we were writing our own songs. Because those songs defines amen, the new identity, the new culture. It defines where we are going. It defines, it defines amen, who we are now in the proximity of the kingdom of God. We began to sing about songs that will take the nation. We begin to sing about songs of the reign of Christ, of the glory of Christ, of the power of Christ, of the authority of Christ. We began to declare that we, 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 we are a people called by God. We are prophetic. Hallelujah. Magalabo. I'm excited. We began to, I mean, we began to, we began to sing songs of the spirit. Songs. Amen. We just burst into spontaneous songs. My God, people used to come from their church just to watch us, you know, <laughs> worship God. We've got our own, you know, unique way of playing instrument. You know, we, we don't play, we don't play Christian song and use worldly, you know, kind of worldly, you know, instrumentation. You know, so that when people are dancing, they are not dancing to the song. They're dancing to, <laughs> you know, Bob Marley and dancing to something else. Come on, we... we my good God, if you come into this thing called the apostolic, your entire life is rewired. There is creativity within the spirit of God. There is creativity. Don't tell me that uh, you, 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 you're, you're in the things of God and you're borrowing pattern from Babylon. And you say, well, well, songs are not, are not, are not carnal. My good God, there is nothing as carnal as songs because every song carries a spirit. I don't know why I'm emphasizing on this now. <laughs> Every song carries a spirit. Remember, we're talking about fasting, and this is God speaking to us now. Every song carries a spirit, carries a frequency, carries a flow, carries a wave. I mean, I'm a psalmist, so I know what I'm talking about. I am a psalmist. A lot of people just know me as a prophet, you know, as you know, as you know, as a teacher of the word. No, I was called to, to you know into the psalmist even before I began to you know you know understand the prophetic. Back then, I was a psalmist. You know, intercession bath in me. This, you know, the psalmist spirit. I write songs. When we sing like this, you, you, the, 
the whole place is lifted up with light. The glory of God fills the house. And that's not just some things that is cooked up. Authentic. What am I saying? That when heaven begins to come close to you, when they say the kingdom, I tell you, the kingdom of God is coming upon this nation. Things will begin to happen. Heaven is is breaking into this nation. Every dimension, every sphere of this nation will never be the same again. It is not by chance, amen, that you know that the president Ramaphosa declare a new dawn. It's not by chance. That is not just some coincidence. It is God using him to prophesy, to declare something. It's a new dawn upon the nation of South Africa. Forget about what the politicians are doing. Forget about, you know, what, you know, somebody is trying to do in KwaZulu-Natal, trying to kill people. Guess what? Heaven, 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 the hand of the Lord is upon this nation. And we are about to see a birthing. Can a nation be born in a day? Yes. For as soon as Zion travail, she brought forth a man-child. A man-child church is coming forth. We are about to see more than ever before, amen, a new order of people. This nation has a place in God that will represent in his counsel globally. And if we are coming into this reality, then we've got to have a company of people who have sight, who have understanding, amen, like, like the company of Daniel, who will position themselves and begin to pray. We're going to get there. We're going to get there very soon. I'm going to touch on that dimension. Amen. That we understand by the books, that we understand, amen, by that which has been prophesied. And as we understand it, Daniel said, I understood by the books that after 70 years, amen, the, 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 the hand of the Lord, amen, will return to Israel. And there will be a return back, amen, from captivity from Babylon to you know to, you know, to Jerusalem, to, you know, to Israel. Hallelujah. And from that understanding, that from that understanding, he engaged God in prayer and in fasting. My good God. I'm talking about the proximity, the proximity of God upon your life. When heaven, when, when the kingdom of God begins to come close to your family, you can no longer live the way, amen, you used to live as a man. Your manhood changes, amen. There's a readjustment of your manhood. Amen. Your position as a father in the house changes. Your position as a priest changes. Amen. You as a wife, your position changes. Your 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 your, your interaction, your relationship changes. You can no longer do things the way you want to do them. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Not because well, you, you, you know, uh, somebody is forcing you because you sense you sense the coming of God. And that's why we're talking about fasting because if you don't fast, you will not sense it. You will not be awakened. Your conscience will be dead. You will still be sleeping and be and be and be in slumber you know to, to, to your own ways and to your own things but if you begin to understand that hey can't you see something there's an handwriting on the wall heaven is doing something there's the coming of God listen the scripture said you know there were ten virgins going to meet with the Lord but because there was a there was a delay a delay from from their own definition not from the not from the definition or you know or, or, of of the bridegroom, <laughs> you know, but but a delay amen, from from the from from the concept of the bride. Excuse me, from the there was a delay from the concept of the bridegroom, not of, of the bride. Amen. So 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 the Bible says they went into slumber. They went into slumber. The bride they went into slumber. There were ten virgins. I, I always say, listen, we've got we've we've thank God for you know a, a virgin church. I mean. It, it, we, we've got to give them, you know, praise. We've got to thank God for, you know, concept of a people who are called, you know, you know, virgins. These were ten virgins. These days we don't have virgins church again. Everybody has been polluted. <laughs> you know, they, 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 there's been pollution all around. We're sleeping around. Amen. We jump from here to here. We don't even know who we are again. We, we sell ourselves cheap to anybody. You know, you just come. You know, make me feel nice, and that's it. it, it it's it's all prostitution that we're doing. We call church. We, we've got to understand these are ten. Virgins, ten virgins. Bible said they took their they took their lamp with oil. Amen. Their weak trim. They were going to meet the bridegroom. And the Bible says there was a delay. Amen. And at that point of delay, they were tired and they went into slumber. They went into they went to sleep. Is that not the condition of the church today? A church that is sleeping. We call ourselves virgins, but we are sleeping. We say we are apostolic, amen. We're virgins, but we're sleeping, amen. We say we are prophetic. We say we are reform we're reformation. We, we, we've given ourselves all kinds of names, but we are sleeping. We have no voice. The Bible says in the night, at the night time, 
He say, "He that will sleep, will sleep in the night. We are not of the, we are not, we are not of the night. We are not of them that go into slumber. We are awake because the light of God is upon us." The Bible says, "At midnight, a town crier came." That's the church I belong to, the church of the town crier. When we started church back then, when we came into the apostolic, I told my people, I told my people, I said, "We are not part of that ten virgins. We are part of that one man, that that town crier who came calling." Hallelujah. The Bible said there was a there was a man blowing the trumpet, blowing the sofa. The bridegroom is here. The kingdom of God, amen, has emerged. The kingdom of God has come near you. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. The kingdom of God is upon you. I want to be awake and alive when that kingdom emerges. More than ever before. Listen to me. There is nothing that can stop or hinder the emergence of the kingdom. There is nothing. There's no there's no war. There is no there is no government. There is no parasite. There is no human being. There is no system. There's no global system. Amen. There is no antichrist. Amen. There is no mention it. There is nothing a man can do. There is no corruption. There is no crime. There is nothing that can stop. Hallelujah. The emergence, the appearance of the kingdom of God. Bible says his coming shall be amen, like, a man, like a thief in the night. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And before he comes, amen, he is coming. Before, before, before we see him physically manifest, he will come in seasons. And this is a season that the, the spirit of the Lord is coming. He's coming to, you know, to cleanse his house. He's coming to mature his people. The proximity, I'm talking about the proximity. The kingdom of God, he says, is near you. Bro, can you feel the nearness of the kingdom? Sis, can you feel the nearness of the kingdom? Are you aware that the kingdom of God is near you? Or is it just business as usual? Come on. In those days, John the Baptist came. Preaching in the desert. In the desert. He wasn't preaching in the palace. He was in the desert because only serious people come to the desert. Only serious people come to listen to a madman preach in the desert. <laughs> I said, that guy's eye is crazy. He's mad. Only a madman can do, you know, what I'm doing. Only, only mad people. The thing they're mad, you'll be shocked. They're the most, they're the most sane people. Because they are saying things you are not saying. Came preaching in the desert of Judea. Saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is near you. Now track with me. Track with me. Track with me. Because I want to show you. This John is dangerous. I want to show you. I, 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 I'm not sure how many of them caught this thing. But I want to show you how John transposed the, the coming of the kingdom. Because when you say the kingdom of God is coming, the kingdom, amen, is an estate. The kingdom is a sphere. The kingdom, amen, represents an order, a culture. The kingdom represents, amen, a, a, a dimension, a government, you know, a, you know, a, a sphere. You know, the, the kingdom represent amen, a, a topography. The kingdom represent, amen, a, you know, a, a, a life of people. A life of people because when you say kingdom, kingdom have economy, kingdom have culture, kingdom have you know, you know, you know, politics, you, you will, government, amen. Kingdom, kingdom has got you know their, their, their own monetary system, you know, in, in the kingdom, their 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 systems of, of you know of, of health, you know, of commerce, their, their their system of education within the kingdom. Because the kingdom basically represents, amen, you know, a, a, a particular, if you will, you know, a nation. But this is a kingdom that is beyond just a nation. But what I'm saying is, if, if you talk about kingdom, you're talking about plurality. It's, it's, a, it's, it's plural. Amen. The, the kingdom is not just you know one man. You you you, you can you can say uh, 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 you know a kingdom, and you're referring to one person. I mean, no. You'll be looking at multitude. You'll be looking at because like the like you know they talk about the kingdom of Saudi now. You know that, that's that, that's a that's a whole you know landscape those are people all right or you talk about the kingdom of uh, swaziland all right you, you, it's a kingdom you know but 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 there are subjects that's the point i'm making you cannot talk about kingdom without understanding amen how this how 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 the system that that defines that kingdom runs 
But I want to show you something that, you know, <laughs> John declared there that, that, that nullify all this thing that we talked about. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll zero into that. He says, it says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near you. Now listen to this verse 3. It says, this is he who was spoken of through prophet Isaiah. Come on. You're saying the kingdom and suddenly you're saying this is he. <laughs> I'm not sure if you got that. In other words, the entirety of what the kingdom represents is zeroed down to a man. This is he. He didn't say this is them. No, you're talking about the kingdom is near you and suddenly you say this is he. <laughs> it's not crazy. It's trying to tell you that this man that is appearing, that is coming near, is the, is the representative of the entirety of the kingdom. In other words, if you see Christ, you have seen the kingdom of God. Only in the kingdom of God, amen, that you find the, you know, the kingdom living within the king. Every king lives within his kingdom. But Christ, but Christ, in the kingdom of Christ, his kingdom lives within him. He encompasses all things. He is the fullness of all. I'm excited. He is the fullness of all. He fills all things in all things. He fills the heavens and the earth. He fills the universe. Everything is in him. Eternity is in him. You are in him. I am in him. Your entire life is in him. You think you think you think you think Christ is just one particular human. When you say Christ, then you reduce him to just one person. My God. If you begin to understand the revelation of Christ, my good God, you collapse. He fills all things. He encompasses all things. That is the kingdom. Because when the kingdom of God begins to come near you, there's a nearness of Christ coming to you. That's what I'm talking about. There is a nearness of Christ upon your life. There's a nearness. So the way you used to know Christ yesterday, Alele, has to change, has to be upgraded. Has to be upgraded. Has to be upgraded. The way you, you, the way you knew Christ yesterday has to change. Alright? I think we've said enough here. Let me go further. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. So, so, John said, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy, on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble for the day of the Lord. Yes, it was from this concept that we went to John. For the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord is the day of his kingdom. Is the end of the day of man. The day, the day of the Lord is the end of the day of man. Amen. The day of the Lord is the end of the sixth day. Amen. This is the seventh day. This is the third day of the Father. Hallelujah. He said, For the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand. You see now, there's a repetition. Is it it is close at hand? A day of darkness, a day of gloom, a day of cloud, a day of darkness, like dawn spreading across the mountains a large and a mighty army comes this is what we're going to be begin to witness amen in the day of the proximity of the kingdom uh, like you said like dawn like dawn spreading across the mountains with mountain the mountains of men the mountains of the earth remember Isaiah chapter 2 in that the, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all mountains there are mountains in the earth there are mountains that are making noise there, there are things that they are powerful but guess what? The mountain of the lost house shall be exalted above all, all mountains. The mountains of education, the mountains of politics, the mountains of politicians who think they are untouchable, the mountains amen, of, you know, of, of the globalist movement who want, to, who, who, who want to monitor everybody and monitor everything that is happening in the world, who wants to own the identity of men, the mountain of God will dwarf them. Like the dawn spreading across the mountains. A large and a mighty army comes. We are that army. We're coming. An army that will not fight with the sword of men. But that will fight with the sword of our mouth. Such, the scripture says, such as never was in ancient time. Nor ever will be in the age to come. Verse 3. Before them, before them, fire devours. We're talking about, you know, the nature of this army, the character of this army. Before them, before them, before them, 
before them fire devours behind them a flame blazes before them the land is like the garden of Eden before them the land is like everywhere they tread everywhere they enter they turn it to a type of a garden of Eden behind them a desolate wilderness everything they leave behind becomes desolate when they move from past season it becomes desolate they don't return back they don't make reference to the to the past than to honor God and give glory who has taken them through those journey through those seasons before them it's like the garden of Eden behind them a desolate wilderness nothing escapes them nothing nothing escapes them they have the appearance of an horse they gallop like like calvaries with a noise like that of a chariot they leap over mountains one of these days we're gonna we're gonna come and just deal with this they live they leap over mountains like cracking fires consuming stumbles like a mighty like a mighty army drawn up for battle at their at, at, at the sight of them nations are in anguish every face turns pale they charge like warriors they scale walls like soldiers they all march in line they don't break ranks they don't break ranks they don't break ranks Ah, oh, my good God, may, may, may you who claim to, uh, to, to, to understand the apostolic, may you understand the scripture. May you understand the scripture that we don't break ranks in the things of the spirit. Why? Because our relationship, amen, has been, has been, has been, has been matured, has been processed and is matured. That when your brother comes and slay you with the word of the Lord, you take it, you accept it, and you don't fight. You don't, you don't say, this guy wants to destroy my church. Who gave you the church? Who gave you the church? Who gave you the people? The people belongs to the Lord. And he will war over his people. He will fight until every form of slavery in the house of God amen, is, is banished and vanquished. The truth will set the people free. They all march in line. Not swaving from their course. They do not jostle each other. <laughs> I wish somebody had seen this with me. They do not jostle. There's no jostling. We don't fight. We don't struggle. Uh, I know better than him. No, no. Every everyone takes their place allow Isaiah Philip to take his place I've got a voice in the land I'm a saint one I carry the emblem of a saint one I was doing well before heaven deployed me to this place I was not poor and I wasn't looking for breakthrough we were at the peak of our ministry when the heaven when the hand of the Lord came upon me and said you got to leave I haven't been praying for this nation for years. He said, now it's time. At the peak of our ministry, I was deployed to South Africa. Say, so he, he who boasts, let him boast in the Lord. I boast in the Lord. I'm not looking for a pulpit to preach. This is my pulpit. He said, if you can take the airwave, you will take the land. That's what I'm doing. There are people caught across the nations hearing us, hearing this declaration. And if they're not hearing, the waves, the heavens are hearing, the spirits are hearing. Hallelujah. They do not jostle each other. Each marches straight ahead. Each, each of them, an army of people, each of them marches straight, straight ahead without breaking ranks. Without breaking ranks. Don't break ranks. The moment you break ranks in this order, you disqualify. You're no longer part of the company of them who are stepping into the days of the Lord, who are coming into the new season. Because what they do, you know, in the past, in the charismatic order, in the Pentecostal order, amen, is that they break ranks. There's competition. 
Amen. Whose jet is better? Who has a bigger house? Who has bigger choir? Who has the biggest limousine? <laughs> you know, they, they break ranks and they jostle each other. They fight each other. If this one, you know, invite God knows what, that one is going to invite ten times better. You cannot do that in the in the days we live in. You'll be judged. Heaven will judge you. Because we are in the twilight of the days of the, of, of the coming of the Lord. We cannot afford carnal life, you know, carnal projection to influence and to corrupt that which heaven is doing this day. You've got to see beyond identity. You've got to see beyond nationality. You've got to see beyond tribe. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to come into a day of the, of the, of the understanding of the revelation of, of who we are. In Christ, Christ defines our identity. Christ defines our giftings. The days where heaven is collapsing the giftings into one are here. Gone are the days of a big man, big man thing, big man ministry, big, big man, big bishop thing. No, heaven is collapsing that thing. In the days that heaven begins to thresh the heart of men, you will remove your bishopric rope. You will throw it away. I'm telling you. You will remove the, your, 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 your prophetic, you know, uh, uh, garment and throw it away. You will remove that thing you call the apostolic, you know, garments, you know. You will, that your big ring, you will remove and throw it away. Why? Because heaven is calling you to collapse into your brother. Allah Baba Yanda. Collapse into your brother. Is a wave of relationship bringing us into a new dimension of the utterance of heaven. Of my God, you will not see the day of the coming of God if you are not ready to collapse and come into the nymphos and come into the stream. The streams are coming back together. All the four streams that came out of Garden of Eden, they are all flowing back. The stream is the life of our grace and our giftings. We are all flowing back. If you're not ready to flow with your brother back, listen to me, you will not enter in Eden. They will not allow you. <clears throat> the minister of the seraphims and the cherubims, they will not allow you in. Remember, they are guarding that gate with the flame of fire. With the flame, with the sword of flame of fire, they will not allow you in. It is mandatory that you understand that relationship becomes the standard and the yastic of our access into this new day. This is the church, the church of the third day. They will not break ranks. They will not break ranks. They rush upon the city. They run along the walls. They climb into the houses. <laughs> they invade every dimension of life. I love this. Oh God, I love, I love Joel. I love Joel. Like thieves, they enter through the windows. They will invade your house before you know it. I always tell people, be careful of how you invite prophets, prophets, true prophets into your house. They will invade your house. Everything that is not of God, they will pull it down before you know it. They're gone. And you're still trying to <laughs> gather everything together. Come on, let it collapse and let heaven build you. Build you. It's true house. Not what you're trying to build by your own strength and power. And then you label it <laughs> International Holy Ghost Center. God help you. Before them, the earth shakes, the heavens tremble, the sun and the moon and the moon are darkened, and the stars no longer shine. I'm talking about a company of people here. These are company of people. These are company of people called sons of God. These are not symbolic of some foreign armies, you know, demonic. No, no. I, I've, I've heard, the, you know, theologians say, no, this is talking about, you know, some demonic foreign army. No, no. This is talking about the army of God. The sun and the moon are darkened and the star no longer shine. The Lord thunders. Verse 11. The Lord thunders at the head, at the head of of his army. Can you see that? I'm reading scripture here. Verse 11. The Lord thunders. The Lord thunders. At the head. At the head of his army. His forces. You see that? His forces are beyond numbers. 
You think you have destroyed the church. You think you can stop the church. You've not even seen the church yet. You've not even seen the church yet. You've not, you've not identified the church. The church is just, just emerging. <laughs> this church we claim that we're doing, they will collapse it. So I'm telling you, I've said it before. I'm saying it again. Some churches will close up in the days that we're living. You will struggle. You build it. Do, build something new. Come into something fresh. You know, uh, try to, you know, make it beautiful. <laughs> Heaven is scattering. It says, strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. Heaven is scattering the house. He's leaving it desolate because he wants to build himself a house. The Lord thunders at the head of his army. He forces. His forces are beyond numbers. And, and mighty is the army that obey his command. The day of the Lord is great. It is dreadful. Who can endure it? Now, I've, I haven't given you all this powerful experience that is going to take place. Excuse me. I haven't given you all this powerful experience that is going to take place. Then it comes to how we are going to step into this reality. Because this is important. I mean, we can, we can read this thing and, and, and just, hallelujah, and begin to rejoice and begin to scream and shout, yes, you know how we do it in the church. Once we, re- we read a promise, <laughs> we start screaming, we start jumping up, we get excited without without going back to look at the modalities how will this happen how will this happen now let's look at it it says even now declares the lord return to me with all your heart this is the key this is the portal into that experience that is going to be taking place return to me return to me declares the lord with all your heart look at the scripture I'm reading Joel chapter chapter 2 verse 12. Return to me with all, with all, not with some, not with almost all. Some people say, well, you know, I, I love this thing that heaven is doing our day. Wow. You know, we, we all speak the language. We speak, the, we, we love it. We love it. Hey, but have you returned to God with all your heart? Or is there still one part amen, that is still holding on to some agenda? Come on. Are you still trying to hold on to 1%? You know, I say, well, I give God 99, but let me still hold this thing. You see, because we're doing church. If we don't, if we don't, if we don't, you know, use wisdom, that wisdom is, 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 is devilish, is of this world. That's what the scripture call it. Have you returned to God in the way you interact with people? Have you returned to God in the way you see people, in the way you treat, amen, your, your, your family, your members in the church? Have you returned to the Lord, amen? Is your heart trash? Is your heart, is your heart contrite, amen? Because he said, return to me with all your heart. The dealings is in the heart first. Before all those manifestations of you being part of the mighty army of God. Amen. That will, that will not jostle. Amen. That will not break ranks. <laughs> you, you, you know, all those things are nice. <laughs> you just say amen. amen. Ah, but before you say amen, you've got to come to this nitty gritty. God says, return to me with all your heart. With all, with all your heart, with all your heart. But you cannot return to God with all your heart except you do the next thing. He said, with fasting. With fasting. Hey, God, are you saying that fasting can assist me to return my heart back to you? Yes, because when you begin to fast, you begin to relinquish. Like I said, when you start fasting, the soul relinquishes its power, relinquishes its authority, relinquishes its, its, its position. That, that, that nature of the first man, that, na- that Adamic nature that is, that is hidden within the soul, begin to, amen, be, 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 you know, be, 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 begin to, you know, be exposed. God start exposing that old Adamic nature within the soul. Listen to me. There are dimensions within your soul amen, that the old man is still there alive, but hiding. Amen. You know, pretending in coma truth. He's not dead yet. He's just there hiding. Let's let an occasion come one day that will trigger that nature. You will see that man appear and you'll be wondering, wow, are you still there? He's there. But when you start fasting, amen, fasting forces the old man to give up, to relinquish his power. The soul, 
is what the father is dealing with in this day because when, when we talk about entering the third day is the day of the spirit but in this second day that men are doing kind of things you know mixing the thing you're mixing god and mixing the flesh mixing god and mixing it with soul you, everything is mixed is a mixture like i said some time ago it's a, it's a, i mean it's a powerful woman everybody follows on facebook <laughs> i mean she invited me to, uh, to you know, to 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 you know, to to a group where most of the things they're doing there is new age, but yet she will come and be declaring, you know, the the spirit of God, prophetic. Hey, God is moving. This is what God is saying. But how do you, how do you, how do you connect yourself with people who are who who are worshiping the universe? Not to challenge them. The next time. I had to tell them, no, no, I'm not part of this. I withdrew myself. But you see, because you can't see, because you're blind, you, everybody's following, 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 following. You have no sight. You've been deceived. I'm talking about people on Facebook. They have a large population following them. You think these are, these are very powerful prophetic people. No, they, are, they have mixed the things of God with new age. They're embracing other religion, bringing everything together. They're tapping into metaphysics. They're tapping into, you know, astral travel. They're tapping into strange dimensions in the name of the things of the spirit. Isaiah is not part of that. Isaiah cannot be part of that. I don't care, you know, how important and influential the people are. No. I do not sell my, my soul, my birthright. No. I'm not Esau. I cannot sell my bad right for the pot of pottage. I don't want I don't want such recognition. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. Employ, amen, to, to, to the spirit, to crown from the spirit. Or is it just post? Some people think, oh, this guy have nothing to do. He's just posting things. Every time he's just posting. Just, I have done what men, what men are trying to do, what men are running around. We've built churches. We've built things. We've done that. We've done those things. We've, we've empowered people economically. So we're not just making noise. To me, what I'm doing, it's a ministry because that's what the Father will have me do. So if you don't understand, you will think I'm crazy. You think, oh, this guy doesn't have time. He doesn't have, he's just, you know, no. I'm, I'm, I'm deliberate and strategic in my call, in my assignment because there are things that heaven wants to expose. There are things that heaven wants to check it. Is this man speaking God the telecast healing through somebody preaching on the on the telly and you raise your hand in your house and you receive healing and you're telling me that you know god doesn't use platforms internet platforms to bring healing to bring hope to bring restoration you must be you must be the most dumb person you're blind and you don't understand the things of god you don't understand the dynamics of the days that we live in because facebook is not just a continent it's a nation let me repeat what I just said. Facebook is not just a continent. It's not just a nation. In fact, Facebook is a nation. It's not just a you know a, 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 you know a continent or you know a state as, as it were. You've got people from different part of the world connected. That thing is bigger than the owner itself. That's why government across the world today they're trying to they, you know they're trying to monitor it they, they're trying to own it they, they're trying to because that thing is bigger than Mark Mark himself. That was God speaking. God used him to establish that thing. It's bigger than that thing is bigger than the you know than the American government. It's bigger. It's, you want to shut down Facebook? How are you going to do that? So, if you don't understand the dynamics of the days, you have no prophetic sight, you have no prophetic understanding. You, you just think, well, these people are just posting, they're just making noise, they're just making noise. Brother, you're, you, 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 you're blind. <laughs> you're blind. Because the activity that takes place on those platforms affect, affect your income, directly or indirectly. Haven't you seen somebody just made a simple mistake? Just, just you know, made a simple mistake on, on, on his tw tw Twitter handle and the person got fired. That person got fired. And on the other hand, you see people, you know, put something on their Twitter handle 
and suddenly the person gets employed. And you tell me that what is going on on social media is not real? You, you cannot link it to, you know, to spiritual things? I'm saying again, you're blind. You, you're lost, in fact. Religion has captured you. What led me to this? We're talking about the issues of the heart, the heart, the heart, the heart. Because when you when you when you're saying things that that is not in alignment with 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 integrity with truth in your heart, guess what? You are, amen, an upgraded Pharisee. You are an advanced Pharisee. He said, "Return to me with all your heart." God doesn't want some of your heart. He doesn't want almost all your heart. Return with to me with all your heart. I, 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 I will. <clears throat> assume that he will stop there but he didn't stop there he said with so you don't just return he said with with fasting and weeping and mourning with fasting with weeping and mourning with fasting with weeping and mourning with fasting so basically fasting positions you amen in in that order of circumcision consecration redemption we're talking about fasting here Return to God. But God said, it's not going to be enough for you to just to say, it. I want some action to your returning. Go into a fast. He's talking to a nation here. We're not just talking about, to, to a, about an individual. He's talking to the nation of Israel. This is the pathway to the redemption of Israel. He said, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping. Weeping, weeping. Not, this is not fake, fake weeping.